Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. In today's video, I would like to touch on a subject that is still in the heart of a controversy and a very lively debate. And the topic is which medium is better to keep our data safe? Some people, I know them, they still use external hard drives. They just plug the external hard drives into the computer, copy the data to it, pull it out, put it back in the drawer, and their conscience is clear. Some people like to use some sort of a public cloud, like Dropbox or Box. They just install the agent on their computer, they designate a folder in advance, and then everything that happens in this folder just synchronizes automatically to the cloud, and again, the conscience becomes clear because the data is safe in the cloud. Some people take it a step further and use a NAS, by the way, like I do. And then they use the, the NAS suite of tools to back up their data, to synchronize maybe to an offsite location, to synchronize to a public cloud location. But this is exactly the debate that I want to tackle in this video. Who's to say which is better? Who is to say that an external drive is wrong and the public cloud is right? Who's to say that you need a NAS and you don't need to use an external hard drive? Well, the answer is probably depends on who you are and what your data is. Because for some people they say, well, my precious, my precious data is just the pictures I take on my phone and those automatically go into Google Drive, at least on Android phones, and that's enough for me? Well, if you ask me, that's not enough, but even, even if it's enough for them, pretty soon Google Drive will stop being free. So that's a whole other debate for future videos. But in today's video, I want to do some sort of a comparison of the disadvantages and advantages of each of the mediums, and we will see at least we will be able to choose our preferred tool for backup according to what we see fit for us. But the most important conclusion, no matter what tool we will choose to use eventually, the most important conclusion is to just backup your data. No matter how, be active, choose a tool, choose a media, and backup your data regularly. So let's go over to the computer and start exploring the advantages and disadvantages, and we'll be able to decide for ourselves which tool is best for us. Join me. All right, so we are at the computer, and before we get started, a few uh, basic assumptions uh, that I would like uh, uh, to bring forward. One is that using a, a, a public cloud, any, any vendor is not really backup because I'm, if I'm syncing my files to, to the cloud and I accidentally delete files from my computer, this deletion will sync up to the cloud. So uh, uh, in a professional sense, syncing is not a backup. And the second assumption is that we need to strive to achieve what is known as the 3 to 1 strategy. 3 to 1 strategy means at least three copies of your data on two different media types, and one of them should be located off-site. Now, I realize that many of us do not have the resources to achieve a full 3 to 1 strategy, but at least this is where we should strive to be. So, having said these two assumptions, I created an Excel spreadsheet to uh, bring forward the advantages and disadvantages of each media type. And let's start with the public cloud. Now, public cloud most uh, biggest selling point is that it's very easy to use. And I think when I'm talking about the average Joe, I think that most people are able to install the agent select a folder to sync and start syncing it. 
it has small monthly fees as opposed to a bigger upfront cost of an ad. I mean, let's say the average is $10 per, I don't know, um, one terabyte, I think. Now, if you want to buy an ad, the minimum you can, uh, you can expect uh, to spend is, let's say you buy a DS, a 220J, that's 170. Uh, um, you, be, you buy two two terabyte drives, that's another uh, 110 or 120 dollars. You get roughly 300 dollars that you need to spend up front. By the way, if you want to save money in the long term, you should definitely go for an S, but I will touch it later on. Uh, one other uh, big advantage point is that it's highly available. And if I take Dropbox, for example, at least I can't think of a case where Dropbox went offline or crashed or something. I don't recall that. These are all major selling points for the average Joe and they really hit the sweet spot. So I get why public cloud are so uh, popular. But the disadvantages is that if, you're, uh, if you have a need for real serious uh, amount of data and not the free five or 10 gigabytes, you need to pay continuously every month the fees of the cost of uh, your public cloud. You don't have really uh, ownership on your data. I mean, maybe it's your data and I'm not talking about the legal aspects. You got your data on someone else's computer, you don't really own it. It's prone to hacking and uh, we all seen a few cases of celebrity accounts being hacked and photos were spread across uh, the internet. And the most important part, it's not a backup. Just syncing up to the cloud is not considered a backup. Now, for an external drive, and I also use uh, uh, the occasional, uh, 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 from time to time, an external drive, but not as a means of a backup. I use it ma mainly for I know for moving data from one uh, computer or another or from a camera to a computer, just moving the data, not to backing it up. But it, it's really easy to use. You just plug it in, copy the data, plug it out. Really easy to use. It's a low upfront cost. External hard drives are very cheap these days. It's local and it does not rely on internet connection, which is great and it's portable you can take it with you wherever you go i get that it's really easy but it's a hard drive and the disadvantages is that you have no protection unlike for example a nes you get the protection of certain levels of raid if if i compare it to a public cloud the servers of the public cloud vendor probably use some sort of level of raid and replication etc with an external hard drive, you get no protection. They're easily ruined. And again, does not re count as a backup. Even if you do a regular plug-in, copy, plug-out, it's still not considered a backup. Now, when it comes to a NAS, uh, um, the more bays you have, the more RAID options you have. But even if you go for the DS220J, uh, uh, you get two bays and you can at least do RAID 1, which means you can tolerate a, a, a drive failure that can completely die on you and you will still not lose your data. You got multiple backup options that are valid backup options. For example, you get active backup for business. You can backup your computer. Not only that you can restore individual files and folders, you can restore your computer even if your computer hard drive completely crashed. You can restore your computer, I mean the operating system and data level, and you'll be exactly where you were before the crash. You got versioning, you got your data ownership, you got no one in the chain, you, you, you completely own your data, it doesn't rely on any outside vendor. You got long-term cost, and if I uh, compare it to um, a $10 subscription to a public cloud, and let's say uh, uh, I get $300 worth of upfront front, up front cost for a NES, I, in the long term, let's say for uh, three years, I got $360 for a public cloud account, 
or $300 I got uh, from upfront cost, I actually saved money in the long term. In regards to remote access, I got, for example, the public cloud is all about remote access. But if I'm comparing it to a Synology uh, uh, feature, I got Quick Connect, which gives me a publicly available URL I can use to externally uh, um, get access to my NAS and the files on my NAS. And I got a free dynamic DNS uh, that can point to my, uh, uh, to my NAS and I can use this to maybe port forward uh, uh, to get access to my NAS any way I want to. I will have external access to my files and I do not need the portable hard drive and take it with me wherever I go. I just open up a browser and I can access my files, download them, upload to my NAS, whatever I want. Added value, for example, the built-in apps. And even if we're talking, still talking about backup, not only I have the active backup for business that I can back up my computer too. I have, for example, the hyper backup. And this means, actually, this is very cool. I'm going to do a, a separate video just about hyper backup. But I can back up the content of my NAS to another NAS off-site. And if you have a friend or a colleague or a family member that has a Synology NAS, you can assign each other a, a space on each other's NAS and you can back up from each other to each other and have an off-site, a real legitimate off-site copy of your data. If you're uh, still using public cloud and you continue and you plan on continue to using it, you can use uh, um, the cloud sync application to make a, a shared folder on your NAS continuously sync with your public cloud provider. And this is something that I do, for example, I don't pay um, public clouds anymore, but I do have the free accounts and the free space that they give me. And every time I want to access my public cloud accounts to see what's in there, I don't have to log in in the browser to my account and see what's in there. I can show you I have a folder that's called Cloud Sync. And for example, here's the content of my Dropbox. I don't have to actively open up a browser and go to my Dropbox to see what's in there. So that's another layer. It's not a backup, but it's another layer of resiliency. And I got a few uh, other applications I can use on my NAS. For example, it's my NAS. It's my Plex server, sorry. It's my uh, audio station server. I got a lot of applications. If you will take a short look at the package center, you can see that you have a lot of applications you can install on your NAS and that's just an added value. It's a, a few other things you can do with your NAS and actually there's a lot of them. It's flexible and scalable because unlike with uh, uh, an external hard drives that you get the amount of storage you bought, you can increase the storage on your NAS just by hot swapping drives and then the, uh, the storage volume will be increased. Uh, um, it is local and internet independent for most of the usages. But for example, and again, this is a, a video that will be uh, separate on its own. For example, Synology Photos. If you, uh, uh, if you heard the news, pretty soon Google Photos will stop being free. And if you want to continue syncing your photos from your phone to Google Photos, you will probably have to pay in order to do that because the free storage will not be big enough to, uh, to hold your, uh, all your photos. So you, you will either have to pay Google for storage or you can use Synology Photos to stop syncing to Google and start syncing to uh, Synology Photos and you get the same experience with AI and facial recognition and location recognition and automatic album creation based on the AI findings. So this will be something that does rely on internet connectivity, but the base core functionality of finesse does not rely on, uh, 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 on internet. And 
if we'll take a look at some of the disadvantages a NES has, and I realize there are disadvantages, there is upfront cost, and it's not easy even for me to spin up a few hundred dollars to get started with a NES. It's something that you need to plan uh, uh, this expense to, but again, in the long term, if you want to save money, buying a NES is the most a logical decision you will ever do. And again, some technical knowledge is required. So unlike a public cloud that was an infrastructure, an infrastructure that was already built up for you, or an external hard drive that does not rely on any technical knowledge on your part, with a NAS, any NAS, you need to have some level of technical knowledge to set things up. But you know that I am a Synology user and I have used some other vendors NES and I won't say its name but it starts with a Q. The user interface of a Synology NES is by far the easiest and most convenient and most designed for simplicity. Actually Synology wins awards every year for the user interface and I can definitely see why it's well designed. The, the level of detail is amazing and the whole interface is really easy to use relatively to something that is prone to be technical. So given all these advantages and disadvantages, at least for me, the answer is pretty clear. I really recommend everyone to go ahead, buy an NES, any NES, and start using it and get the benefit out of it. But if you uh, continue to use external hard drives or public cloud, whatever you choose, just do some sort of backup. Just make your, uh, um, your data available in, as another copy anywhere. I recommend the NES, but whatever you choose will be, I guess, good for you. Just use it. So. This is in a nutshell. I will, of course, create separate videos for the topics that are most relevant or, or, or deeper. If you like this video, please give me a like on the video. If you think that I forgot something or want me to deep dive deeper into something, let me know in the comment section below. If you are still going to use public cloud or external hard drives, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when new videos come out. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.